In this video, we're going to cover the basics of controlling spectrum measurement engines and adjusting spectrum measurement settings and options. We're going to start by creating a few more spectrum measurement engines, just in case you don't currently have an interface connected, but you want to follow along and work with some live data. In IO config, enabling the generator input device creates a spectrum measurement engine driven by Smart's internal signal generator. We can also enable an input from the computer's built-in microphone. I'm going to go over to measurement config and choose colors that I like for these measurement engines. The arrow is used to run or pause the spectrum measurement engine. When you click run, the measurement engine starts running FFTs on the input signal 24 times per second. Click the colored circle to show or hide the measurement. It's important to understand that it keeps running and generating data, even if it's hidden. If you pause the measurement engine, it's automatically hidden, but we can show it again and see the measurement data still sitting in the engine's data buffer. The input meter on the measurement engine shows the input signal level. Our target level for a healthy measurement is somewhere around negative 12 dBFS, which is where the meter turns from green to yellow. I'll start the generator and then start the generator spectrum engine. As I turn up the level, we can see that a level setting of negative 12 just barely reaches into the yellow region on the input meter. We can access the measurement settings for any engine by double clicking on the engine. Here we have controls for FFT size. This is a global setting that affects all spectrum measurements within SMART. We can set the averaging, choosing from either FIFO, first in, first out averaging, or a longer integrated average. At any time, you can flush the averaging buffer by pressing the V key on your keyboard. You can also choose fractional octave banding, or apply a weighting curve to the data. These are global settings, but we can override them per measurement engine by unchecking Use Global and choosing an option. It's important to understand that weighting and banding options only affect how the data is displayed. They don't affect the underlying data itself. That means you can go back and examine captured data using a bunch of different banding and weighting options. We'll see an example of that in a bit. You can also access banding and averaging right from the control bar. Here's a little tip. Since I just adjusted the banding dropdown, that's the last control I touched, and so it still has focus. So I can use the up and down arrows on my keyboard to quickly scroll through the banding options. You can access the Spectrum Options dialog by opening the Options menu and choosing Spectrum. But there's a quicker way. If you hover your cursor over the Spectrum label in the control bar, it turns into a clickable button. This is called a magic button. Click it to quickly access Spectrum Options. One setting to be aware of here is the option to display banded data as bars, lines, or both. Both is an interesting setting because it allows you to simultaneously see both the banded data and the unbanded data. For example, here we can see the 3 dB per octave tilt of the pink noise and how it's the fractional octave banding that makes it appear flat. The line setting might be helpful if you want to look at a bunch of RTA measurements at the same time. However, you should be cautious because it can make spectrum data look very similar to transfer function data. So we recommend leaving this set to bars while you're still getting familiar with SMART. 